Borrowed out and welcome back to the Instant Sim channel. I'm again playing Professor Layton and the Curious Villagers immediately after the last episode. So there are a few things in the journal which I forgot to look at actually. So we are looking for the aim. So you guys can pause the read these and back to Jason Claude. So you guys can pause the read those if you want to. And the aim. If you can place furnishings you've collected near the loops of Professor room, Layton's room. You use your stairs to move an item. When you move an item, it appears on the top screen of the room in which you placed it. The actual location of an item within the room is decided for you. Both Luke and Professor Layton will comment on how the furnishing of their rooms is coming along. You will also arrange the ideal living space for both of them. You can check how they feel about their rooms by tapping their names on such screen. Each time you take a new item, you'll be asked which room to put it in. You can always go back and change the layout of items, so don't think too hard about their location. You get a new item when one of your rooms is full, it will be sent to the room with the remaining space. But both Luke and Professor are completely satisfied with their living quarters, so they're going to happen. Right, so let's put this a fine piece of phone that matches the wall. Okay, so that was quite simple, I guess. Painting. Ah, yes, yeah, this stupid painting. So, I said I'll do the painting at the end of the series. Well, not at the end of the series, but I'll, I'll have a think when I'll do the painting, because currently there's not enough to do. There's not enough, uh, like, uh, scraps at the moment. Right then, we have two people here, so let's have a look at this angry person first. Oh, I have just had it this time. I think I'm going to explode. Like a water balloon filled with rage. What's that? Why am I angry, you'd ask? Why am I angry? Let me in here, will you? There are three idiots in the village, and we just can't stand each other. It's so bad that none of us want to see each other's ugly faces, but St. Mystery isn't a big place, is it? Right? Sometimes we cross paths on the way to work, and just like that, bam, time for a screaming match. I really wish we could find a way to stop bumping into each other in the mornings. Hang on, you look like you've got a good head on your shoulders. Do me a favour and help me out. Why should I help you out? You didn't ask please. You didn't ask please. How dare you? You should have been nice. You should show your manners. <laughs> Why should I help you? Draw a path between each man's hoe and his work by connecting matching blocks. The catch is that these men can't stand each other. They can't stand each other. So you have to make sure that none of the paths touch. Fair enough. Uh, to make a path, all you need to do is tap a block and start drawing. Right, this is not going to be easy, so... I'll just connect things I know already. There is no way of getting... Right. It's got to be another way of getting D around, so I'm going to guess that's my way for D. Oh, what could be that? B, because I go around this way. That. Go like that. No, I can't. Clear. Oh god, this is a difficult puzzle. <laughs> Let's do some obvious ways of doing it first. Stick to the obvious. And then we'll go a little bit more complex. Now this guy's land to the D land box as well, so you say C goes this way. Let's say that A goes that way. There's no way that B can get to work.
Uh, it really is a difficult puzzle. Bees landlocked at no at every single turn that I take. Oh uh, god. Um P is a straight line. Do you know that? What is that? This is a difficult one. This entire episode is probably just going to be me trying to solve this stupid puzzle. I'm gonna figure out something. Right, when actually looking at the blooming how to do it, it's actually very simple. Now, B is a straight line, that's simple enough. But every other one is wrong. <laughs> so, D goes something along the line of this. Like that. And then A goes down up like this. And then C does something along with the acrobatic way like that. There so we go. Hey! Thank you, Google, that works. That's right. Uh, those men don't even have to look at each other. Good job. Good job indeed. There you go. Oh, thanks a minute. I can finally get to work without blowing my top. I really mean it. You're a lot brighter than you look. Oh yeah, let me clue you in. See that big old mess of a tower beyond the village square? Take a tip from me. If you know what's good for you, you'll stay away from that thing. Well, right then I'm off. Thanks again, chump. Don't ever call me chump. Never. <laughs> that was a difficult puzzle there, but then again, it was worth 50 uh, points. I'm sorry to trouble you, madame, but have you seen a white cat or die? A white cat? Uh, yes, it ran over that way towards the park. What may I ask are you planning on doing with it once you find it? Uh, we are going to take it back to Lady Dahlia. It's her cat, and she's asked us to bring it back to her. Ha <laughs> and you're going to try and catch that cat barehanded? Oh, good heavens. That's a bit naive, don't you think? Listen here, cats love treats. The child will go over with some food. What do you suggest? <laughs> I've got some old fish bones around here that I'm sure the little thing would go wild over. I'd be happy to give you them, give them to you if you solve this puzzle for me. More puzzles! Don't be as difficult as you want. This is worth 30, so it's probably not going to be too difficult. Seven prize-winning pigs are lazing about in the pen. To make sure that the pigs don't fight with each other, you've decided to section off the pen with three ropes. Can you hitch the ropes up to some of the posts shown below and separate all the pigs from each other? From not even a snout or curly tail can sneak over each pan. Draw the stairs from one point to another line when you're finished sectioning off all the pigs taps a bit. So I need to, t to separate all the pigs. This isn't going to be easy. Is it?
See so section of half of That is simple. Sir That is a lot simpler than I was expecting it to be. That was plumber simple. There we that go. Was. What could I say? That's just Every simple on that. <laughs> Good job, even the pigs are bound to be happy with this arrangement. But there's a triangle in the middle, I mean that guy could be part of the Illuminati. Think about it. That's never. Mind. I must say, I'm very impressed. Here you go, then some fish bones, as I promised. Good luck with them. We got some fish bones and pig pen partitions. Very well. Right. So Claude went towards the park. Professor, there she is. Quickly then, use the fish bones. Yeah, Claudia, come here, girl. Now? <laughs> hey. We've done it, Professor. Here she comes. <laughs> Excellent. Now we can head back to the Rhinehold Manor. Chapter 2 The Fugitive Feline. Lady Dahlia's cat has escaped. Such oh, wait, we've already done that. Having successfully caught Claudia, Professor Layton and Luke decide to head back to Reinhold Manor. Are you becoming accustomed to moving around and investigating the same mystery? Here's some advice to keep your investigation running smoothly. Some puzzles will disappear from their location in the village as their story progresses. But there's no need to worry. Most of the unsolved puzzles are sent to Granny Riddleton's shack in the village square. Just visit often, visit often to track down puzzles you passed up and work towards completing every puzzle in the game. So Jew's pictures has been sent to Grindr and the shack. So we'll do that puzzle quickly now because it's only one. So if we're not immediate, something doesn't seem quite right, Professor. P -p Professor, it's oh, it's simply awful. Come quickly, please. What's the matter, Matthew? I, if you're worried about the cat, we've brought her back safe and sound. Oh, well, my lady will be very happy to hear that. But this is no time to worry about a cat. Just hurry upstairs, right this way, please. So you're the famous Professor Layton, then? The name's Chow, Inspector Chow. I'm the inspector on this case. Well, I'd hardly call it a case if this is about Claudia. We brought her back safe and sound. Oh, Claudia, my baby mama missed you so much. <laughs> What's this cat doing here? Why on earth would you bring an animal into a crime scene? Have some sense. We were out when this crime took place and don't know what's going on. Could you please fill us in? There's been a murder, Professor. A man was killed here. What? Who was murdered? The victim was a resident of this address, one Simon Reinhold. Simon was... Approximately two hours ago, I received a report that a man collapsed at Reinhold Manor. Upon arrival at the scene, it was apparent to me that Simon was already dead. I see. The cause of death... I am currently conducting an investigation to look into it. I'll just let you know right now, Mr. Layton, I'm looking at you as a potential suspect as well. The rest of the details concerning this investigation are classified. Who would suspect Layton of being a murderer? Speaking of the details, who placed the call to the authorities? Are you ears clogged, you, you deaf? Didn't I just tell you that these details are classified? Huh. All right, everyone, I'll be taking statements from each of you in the other room. Come in one by one. And let me just make this clear, and in no circumstances anyone to leave until I've talked to everyone. 
Okay. I'll just do some quick talk to this guy and then we'll end the episode and we'll talk to the other guy. Imagine a murderer in this very house. It brings a chill to my spine, it does. You're a detective, you are, are you not? Do hurry and find the monster that did this. My god, sir, I'm no detective. But I agree that your concerns are certain, certainly warranted. No one is safe until that criminal is behind bars. My, se my sentiments exactly. I just don't understand it. Simon would be snide, but he wasn't the type to be hated. If the, cri if the criminal was after my brother's fortune, it can very well be this friend feeds next time. You have a point. If we narrow the mo motive to stealing the Reinhold fortune, there are few potentials, fewer potential suspects. Good gracious, you don't think I'd do something like this now. Simon and I got along very well, I'll have you know. He wasn't very close to Augustus though. You know, all this talk of families has me contemplating a puzzle I once heard. Okay, we'll do this one last puzzle now, and then we'll end the episode. And in the next episode, we'll go back to Granny Littleton's if we can. Bickering Brothers. Six brothers have gathered around a table to eat dinner. Let's call them brothers one to six, with one being the eldest and six to the youngest. Each of the brothers is prone to fighting with the siblings directly above and below him in age, and can't be seated next to either of them. Also, brothers 3 and 5 got into an argument the other day and refused to sit next to each other. But the one has already sat down, can you find a seating arrangement for the others that will keep everyone from bickering? See, it's number 1 you've sat down already, you eldest. <laughs> okay, so 3 and 5 can't be together. And the eldest and youngest, the one older than 2 can't be near 1 or 3, so... Great. You can put 3 there. Because that's uh, fine. And we can put two there, but we can put four. We can then put two here. We can put five there and six there. That was actually quite simple. <laughs> Let's see if that's correct. There we go. No. Frankly, I'm ashamed. They're an unruly bunch of seatly brothers, so they won't fight at the dinner table. Hmm. What have I done wrong? Ah, put four and three together. Damn it. Can six swap with four? No, it can't, because five is there, so it can two swap four. That seems right. Should do it. Hey, we got it. Mm -hmm. Another puzzle solved. Good job. Sit the boys has shown that there shouldn't be any trouble. The mirror image of the seating arrangement is also a valid answer. Yes, that's fine. Perfect. Ah, yes, it's that. So that's the answer. Thank you for clearing up the puzzle, but we're still not closer to finding Simon's killer. I assure, I assure you that I have nothing to do with it, so please go out and find the real murderer. Of course. I understand about your position, it appears I am a suspect too. I'll find out what I can. You go straight to the Bickering Brothers as well, so... I am going to end this episode here because this is now going quite of a long episode. So, we'll just have a look at the general first. What we found. Alright, so... Thank you so much for watching this episode of Professor Layton and the Curious Village. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. It'll help me a lot, and you'll get more videos like this. So don't forget to like my Facebook page, follow me on Twitter and on Twitch. And as always, I will see you in the next video. But until then, goodbye.